And welcome to What Culture Gaming. My name is Jules Gill, and I am a very happy man indeed. Not because I'm here self isolating in Wales, no, no, but because Capcom have been lovely people and sent over a review copy of Resident Evil 3's remake, and I get to share my views with you today. Now here's the interesting thing. When Resident Evil 2's remake came out last year, what it managed to do was something really impressive. Not only was it a great game, but it managed to change the discourse between the fan base as to what was the best Resident Evil game. Now for years, many people have been saying it's definitely Resident Evil 4. That was pretty much the consensus. But with this retooled, reworked and really scary reboot, well, it was clawing at the heels, definitely. And a lot of people were saying, actually, this is really good and we wanna see people carry on with this further down the line. So then Head started turning back towards Capcom and saying, well, what are you gonna do with Resident Evil 3's remake? Is it gonna be any good? Is it gonna be the game that's gonna topple both of them and claim the crown on top of the very bloody body pile? Well, this is the thing. It is still a stonkingly good game, do not get me wrong. But there are a lot of differences and changes that have been made between this, the remake, and the source material that may distance some fans. It is still a blisteringly paced, frantic, chaotic, and ultimately terrifying experience, but maybe one that doesn't have as much replay value as we would have liked. However, before I talk about the good and the bad of this remake, we should definitely talk about the ugly. And by that I mean Nemesis, because by God, this creature is insane. After seeing the trailer and demo footage, I knew that I was in for a treat, going toe to tentacle with this monster, but I couldn't have expected how many ways he was actually able to dish out the damage. From his Mr. X power stance, swipes, ability to jump in front of the player, drop in from the sky, infect other zombies to become tongue-whipped foes, use of a flamethrower, rocket launcher, a scream that renders you vulnerable to attack, and of course, the ability to fucking run. Yeah, he's quite something to behold. It is easily one of the most impressive video game AIs to come out since Alien Isolation, and I do not say that lightly. Whenever Nemesis is on screen, the entire tone of this game changes, and it forces you into a sort of animalistic survival. It will not stop, and neither should you. And it was an utter joy to use Jill's quick step style dodge to, or use the environment to evade or stun him. And I was so pleased that Capcom managed to take what they had built with Mr. X and move the situation forward. I was worried that it was just gonna be more of the same, but my God, was it intense. And of course, as many of you will know, the version that was shown off in the demo and all of the trailers, that's just his first form. And we get to see him explode into all manner of horrible body horror that only Capcom can really bring to life. And that is definitely in part thanks to their RE engine. The environments that have been rendered with this kit ooze with style and deliberate care. Debris is strewn all over the streets and it paints a city in the throes of death. Zombies and other enemies are far more numerous than the previous remake and each still carry enough differences that you'll never see the same model twice. And facial animations are absolutely stellar. I mean, you will now be able to appreciate Jill's snide and smug humor all the way throughout. And especially there's a facial twitch that she has at the very end of this game that sent me home with a smile on my face and a smile in my heart. However, the real star of this show is actually the fire physics. I mean, for starters, it's everywhere, from burned out buses and cars to raging infernos that are started by the nemesis's flamethrower. Honestly, it is like the dev team really wanted to show you every single way that they could manipulate fire because it creates such intense moments and I absolutely love it, especially how it plays with the lighting as well for these situations. It casts things that would normally be abjectly well lit into stuff that has shadows cast in very natural but terrifying ways and I'm a huge fan of use and manipulation of the visual space like that. However, you might not actually get a chance to enjoy the scenery as much as you'd like because this game runs at a blistering pace. And that's kind of a double-edged sword. As a positive, the focus on action is very in keeping with the original's shift towards action and away from trudging puzzle-solving reliance. But as a negative, it means that you're never in one place for long enough to establish a real connection. It kind of feels in places like the way that Resident Evil 3 approaches its pacing 
is like a best hits album. It's got the best hits, it's the greatest songs, but they're not really within the context of the rest of the album, meaning that you can just chop and change between these things and they give you completely different emotional states but sometimes that doesn't necessarily tie together that well. And you know what, this can leave some sections feeling a bit rushed or lackluster. And a great example of this actually concerns Nemesis itself. Because while you're in Raccoon City, he is a persistent threat, constantly inserting himself and ruining what is already a pretty bad day. But then the game shifts him to his second form and suddenly the threat of him popping up at any time gets removed. You only get to fight Nemesis at certain stages scheduled events. Now this feels like a huge wasted potential because I had intense amounts of fun with those first encounters because of how varied and different they were. I feel like they really could have pushed the boat out on that but they chose not to. Now that's not saying that the boss battles themselves are bad. In fact, I would arguably say that they are better than Resident Evil 2's boss battles because they don't have that annoying crane boss battle with Birkin. The second one, that twisted my tits. But in this one, we get much better bosses, a bit more contrived in how they're set up. And I'm sure that a lot of people will probably state online that this is literally a boss arena for one of them. But still, they are really engaging and action packed. It also means that characters come and go with such speed that emotional connections are rarely built and a mid-game heroic moment is left feeling more than a little underwhelming. A statement that actually speaks of how little time you get to explore the RPD in this game as well. I mean, I know that this is well-trodden ground thanks to the previous remake, but we barely got a glimpse of it before we're whisked away to another location. And it's not even down to the level sizes, which are still pretty like commendable actually. It's more the fact that the the action now overrides the puzzle solving. There's no fetch X to open Y, there's like three puzzles in the entire game, which means that players can blitz through this experience without using any of their grey cells. That's great, but also a slight problem, because that sort of artificial padding meant that you were going back through the same corridors in the previous remake and it was building fear because they would always find ways to make them change and feel different. Here though, it's kind of like a one and done experience, you solve the puzzle or shoot whatever in this area and then you're done. You never have to go back there again. And that's a shame because a lot of work has clearly gone into these environments. It is lucky therefore that the game plays phenomenally well. Shooting is as tight as it was before, enemy placement will have you constantly having to readjust your plans and the variety of ways to be killed means that you're balancing weapons and items at all times. And you know what balance has clearly been at the forefront of the developers minds because while you do have this new roll of aid, you also have Carlos's straight punch that can knock down enemies, you don't get the use of support items, you don't get that get out of jail free card when you get grabbed. Instead, you're going to have to use your timing to evade being grabbed or basically stand and make sure that you are picking your enemies off one by one at range. And obviously when you've got so many around them, that can be extremely difficult. I feel therefore that Resident Evil 3's remake is a more difficult game, not only because of the threat of Nemesis, but also because of the fact that you can't rely on these get out of jail free card items. Hardcore mode also returns to absolutely punish players. And I noticed a considerable difference between this and the normal difficulty, which was actually quite refreshing as the normal difficulty had ammo in abundance. That could be a good or a bad thing. However, not all changes in the gameplay are welcome improvements. I mean, for some reason, the game insists on having a few QTE sequences that are really, for lack of a better word, pointless. I mean, one of them is literally just holding it up on the thumbstick and it doesn't require you to do anything else. And then a few moments later, there's a really well choreographed fight scene that feels like it was begging for player interaction. We saw how well that Resident Evil can do fight scenes and QTEs with the Krauser boss battles in Resident Evil 4, so to not have that there, but have you just hold up a thumbstick and literally you could be yawning and you'll escape whatever situation is going on at the time, that seems pretty bizarre. But this is the thing, it's a short, sharp and very visceral experience and once you're finished, you'll likely be rubbing your hands together thinking, oh god, what extra modes am I going to get to play with? Seeing as Resident Evil 2's remake had four scenarios and the fourth survivor mode, which itself was fleshed out more than the original, so it's actually quite disappointing to say that when you complete this game, there are no extra modes. You unlock a shop which allows you to purchase items that make subsequent playthroughs easier, like take less damage or deal double damage or make rolls easier to activate, but 
I was quite disappointed to see that there was nothing else on offer. I mean, four scenarios. I mean, as I know that some of them were very, very cut and paste, but still, that plus the fourth survivor, there's not even mercenaries mode in this one, and that was in the original. It's clear that Capcom have put an possibly over-reliance on bundling this with uh, Resident Evil Resistance, but if you don't like online gaming, if this isn't your cup of tea, and to be honest, I'm not sure if it's my cup of tea at the moment either, because I'm struggling to see how it fits in beyond just being an extra nice free thing. It seems that that's where they want to push you through to. But if you're buying this just for Resident Evil 3's main remake, you might find that there's not much on the ground. It's a bit anemic in terms of replayability. So yeah, while it is commendable that this is a free inclusion, Resident Evil Resistance, it's possible that this comes at the detriment of what many people consider the main event. If you're not interested in online gaming, you might be left disappointed until some possible DLC comes to flesh things out further. But here's the thing, I truly enjoyed my time with Resident Evil 3's remake. I mean, whether it was sprinting away from Nemesis or expending my last clip to down enemies that were surrounding me, it was just desperation through and through and very intense. And I'm glad that Capcom took a risk and delivered a true Nemesis-esque experience. It's just possibly that the rest of the experiences fall a bit short of greatness and the lack of post-game content will probably annoy some players. Still though, for what it is, which is short and very explosive and chaotic, from start to finish you will definitely have fun and probably the best and worst thing that you can say about it is you'll just be wanting more. However, I always felt like my experiences fell just short of greatness in a few places due to the pacing and a lack of post-game content. Regardless, I feel as a short, standalone experience, this will be warmly received by the fanbase. It probably just won't be a contender for the crown just yet. And so for that reason, I give it 8 stars out of 10. And there we go, my friends. Those are my thoughts on Resident Evil 3's remake. I hope that you enjoyed that, and please let me know what you thought about it down in the comments section below. Don't forget to swing by Twitter to give your old boldy, your big bold bad boy here, a little follow at RetroJ with a zero. And also, if you're thinking about picking up this game, or you've played the demo, or you've had a chance to play it yourself, let me know what you think about it down in the comments sections below. I'll be putting out a written review for Resistance probably later on this week. There's a few teething issues that we need to get through, and I need more people online to actually play it with. But still, expect that and more Resident Evil 3 content to be coming up on What Culture and What Culture Gaming. But until that point, go out or stay in, as would probably be more appropriate, and absolutely smash it, you big ledge. I'll speak to you soon. Bye.